What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. Today we're here with Sadiq. I said that right, right? Sadiq? Correct. Yep. Perfect. Um, Sadiq, he's a photographer from Ottawa, age 21, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Even though like you gave me all this information. Age 21, male. I don't know why I said male. Photographer from Ottawa. I, I met you... First time I met you was actually at... Uh, Park Omega. Um, Park Omega. And I've been, I've been following you for a while. I think we've been talking over yeah. kind of back and forth. And the second I, I saw you, I was like, because the thing is you meet all those photographers there and you're like, who is who? Because everyone goes by their exactly. Instagram names. I never even post my photo on my photography account. So no one knows who I am. No one knows who you are unless you know you personally and you come up, you're like, I'm like, who the hell is this guy? And you're like, oh, I'm Boundcast. I'm like, oh, shit, man. <laughs> it's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> But um, how about you just quickly introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about your backstory, where you grew up, kind of, when you came to Ottawa, if you were always living in Ottawa, kind of. So, so I'm a 21-year-old photographer. I moved to Canada in 2014. I lived my previous 16 years of life in Benghazi, Libya, so North Africa. Okay, North Africa. Mo- I've never been. Mm- you should. It's beautiful over there. I'm sure it's amazing. Uh, yeah. And then I moved to Ottawa summer 2014. Pr- started photography summer 2016 and pursued it professionally mid 2018. So. Okay. Now we're here. God, man. That's, a, that's a, a long time. So how long you said you've been doing photography for? Since summer of 2016. That's when I first purchased my first ever DSLR. Sorry, my sister came in for a second. It kind of, it kind of distracted <laughs> me completely. It's all, it's all good. How, what, how was that transition moving to, to Ottawa from, uh, from it was North Africa, right? Yeah. Correct, Libya, yeah. Transition go, you didn't like the cold for sure. I hated the cold. <laughs> how do you like it now? I uh, still don't like it, that's for sure. But at least we have like late winter this year. Yeah. It's been sure. decent. Late winter. But honestly, overall, I love the transition. Like no complaints whatsoever. Well, I guess like the living situations must have must have been a lot better. Did, how old were you exactly? Sorry, when you when you came over? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, so yeah, yeah. you you kind of went straight into high school from there. Yeah, did two years of high school and then went to university. How does the school system differ? Was it like kind of like a huge switch from from the two countries? Mm, mm, not really. I was doing the British. I was doing the British program back in Libya. The only thing that differs is here you only take four courses per semester and then all in all you get eight courses through the year in high school while there it's one full year and you just study as many courses as you want so i was doing like 12 courses or 13 courses <laughs> wow smart so, guy do you like school not really no <laughs> <laughs> not at all <laughs> but let's get into what we're here for photography um Tell me, like, how you got into photography. Why did you get into photography? What kind of... I've, like, I've always liked photography. But, and it was always just like, oh, look at that beautiful sunset. Just pick up just pick up my phone, snap a photo here and there, post it on my Instagram or something, and then move on. No edit, no filter. And, like, I will probably chose some random filter and just slapped it on there. But after a while, I'm like, you know what? I actually enjoy doing this. And I, I traveled to Toronto early 2016 with my friend who owns a DSLR and he was taking photos. I'm like, can I borrow the camera for a second? And I just started snapping here and there. And Better I'm like, photos than no. him. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? That's actually something I want to get myself into. So two months later, three months later, I went and purchased my first Nikon camera. Well, me, me and you, I feel like you can relate a lot. Cause I, it was literally kind of the exact same thing. Like I would snap photos here and there with your phone and then, yeah. you know, I had a friend exactly like that who kind of, I wouldn't steal his camera like you, but <laughs> I got into it. But were you taking photos back in, in South uh, South Africa? or uh, North Africa. North Africa. Libya. Were you yeah, taking nah. photos there? Uh, just with my phone once every psh, blue moon kind of thing. So barely any. So what was the what was the first camera you bought then? Nikon D5500. Oh, that's just like an entry level kind of thing? Correct. Just above entry. The entry level is the 3000 level, and so I just went for the just above it, and it was the 5500. On your phone, did you kind of learn the settings, or was it a completely new thing? Oh, no, I was shooting auto focus, auto everything, auto settings. And what was the, how was that transition like to go to a DSLR? It must have been like, you didn't know well, anything. I didn't know anything, which 
which which is even then I, I like I had the eye for photography, but I learned so much just by going out there and shooting. Yeah, and I didn't learn like manual settings for like a solid year after I got my DSLR. I was just I was just shooting on auto. I traveled to Cuba, shot everything on auto, JPEG. I had no idea what RAW was. Biggest regret of my life, but we move on. <laughs> well, 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 uh, well, well, when did how did you get into to your manual settings? Did you go directly straight into it, and it was like annoying as hell, or did you kind of go into aperture control and, or something like that? I I used to use uh, shutter uh, shutter priority. Okay, yeah, I used just to for favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I I used to use that just for uh, long exposures. Okay, and then I'm like, you know what? No. Let's go full manual. That's where YouTube came in, taught me a lot of things. Oh, okay, so YouTube was your main main source. Correct. I'm fully self-taught, so I've never actually went to school for photography. Never took any course. Everything's just based off of YouTube. Yeah, but before before um you you did YouTube, it was all that composition stuff that I for photography that was all learned by just experience, eh? Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's, like, I think just because I ha- already had the eye for photography that I fully decided to pursue it. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm actually able to get decent looking photos. And then I'm like, okay, the next thing I need to do to improve my photography is get a good camera. And then once you get the good camera, like with photography, you can never just stop improving. So as soon as I got my camera, I'm like, okay, time to learn how to edit. And then once I learned how to edit, I'm like, time to actually learn how to use my camera settings wise and then oh there's actually a i can shoot in raw and then that led me back to editing you can f- completely change a photo in raw like you can blow like if you have blown out highlights you can still bring lots back if you have completely blacked out shadows you can still bring those back and then you just keep learning actually so well, it's crazy how do we lose him oh, no it's just super sorry sick. it's crazy it's cr- how much of photography though is composition and it's really cool that you learned the composition part f- first because that gives yeah. a huge leg up on anything else that's literally it so like which is why when i first started photography i was just doing very basic editing where i'm just increasing just a bit of my exposure and cr- playing around with, like shadows and that was literally it just because i already had like the composition on point so i was just posting my photos i didn't play around with color i didn't play around with anything like that i was just completely posting my photos well, that's truly what a photo is. Like af- behind all the, the the you know presets and things like that, if you yeah. strip yeah. it down, if you don't have a good composition, man, you're <laughs> no no matter what you do, you could have the best camera out there, best editing software, like it just won't work. I know the cameras. All the camera is an extension of your skills, really. That's the idea. The reason the people who use the amazing cameras have such good photos is really because of their skills and and they they know how to handle the camera. It's it's just an that's extension. The, but you, we're gonna you, move on you, here. Yeah. You moderate for auto photo, eh? Correct. How long have you been doing that? Is that a new thing? Since winter 2018. Winter 2018. What What is it like? Because I tried starting my own, you know, I feel like everyone's done it. Tried starting their own, uh, you know, feature page or whatever they can yeah. on Instagram. I, I, I never actually, I never actually, dis, never even thought about doing it or moderating any account. But then my friend Roland Bass reached out to me and he was like, he needs someone to help him with the account. There was already two on the other t- on the team, and they needed t- like two more. And I was brought on to the team myself and Chris Austin. See Austin eighty nine, I think that's his. Uh, what's it like doing that? What's your what does your job entail, and and how much work goes into it? Is it just kind of like choosing photos to post? Uh, just going through our hashtags, and then once in a while, my marketing side comes in. How do I improve the account? Is there anything I need to switch up? Why are numbers decreasing? Or why are number increasing? You need to just find reasons for everything just to keep the account growing. That is our main goal with the account. Just growing as well as putting out people's work so they can they can be seen. Because I think when I think I was talking to you or you guys have been like Instagram OGs, right? When did you get on Instagram? Well, I got on Instagram like my first my I have my personal account and I opened it in twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Well when did you start yeah. doing photography seriously though on it? Well, I opened my photography instagram because i have two accounts my photography yeah so my photography yeah no my photography instagram account i started it from scratch i don't want to combine my personal life with my photography so i started that in 2016 so as soon as i got my dslr two months after 
I had a decent amount of photos. I'm like, let's start. So just so three years, three years and a half actually to be exact. That's- yeah, but you guys, you guys, because I know I was talking to Roland. I don't know when Roland started, but he said Roland started very early. I think twenty thirteen or something like that. But you guys have been the OGs, because a lot of people. One thing I talk about today is the Peter McKinnon baby boom, is what I like to call it. All yeah. the new photographers joining up now, because Peter McKinnon, the internet, and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's usually at the two year span. I, my, me, myself, I am one of them. I, I started like around two years ago, and a lot of photographers I talk about. But you were before that. It's always funny to see the perspective of people before. Yeah. Fun fact, my first ever, like I was just scrolling through YouTube and then one of the first videos I ever saw of Peter McKinnon, he had like under 100,000 subs and it, and it was him just taping a GoPro to his foot and walking around. That was literally the first video I ever saw of Peter McKinnon. See, I and then, that. <laughs> and then he had the video where it went viral. I think it was like 13 hacks in 90 seconds or something like that. And that's what started his account. That was my first video I saw. The 13 hacks one was definitely the first video that I saw. Yeah. And that, that's like, it brought on a whole new wave and era of photographers. And I don't oh, know if 100%. all of them are good. I don't know if it's a good thing. I, I think it's, you know, it's good. But also at the same time, like some people are just digging themselves in a hole because really they don't like it. They just kind of like that everyone's doing it. Like if you don't like the thing, you won't last doing it kind of thing. So like after maximum a couple of months, you'd be like, yeah, never mind. I don't want this. Or nope, this is this is too expensive for me for something I don't really enjoy. So yeah, well, I'm scared some people get even in further into the trap, and they're like, "Oh, I I don't really like it." Like they don't know if they like it or not, but like over time they'll figure out that they really don't like it, and and they're yeah. just doing it because you know everyone's doing it nowadays. Everyone's you know, for clout. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally it. <laughs> everyone's doing it on their phone things like that. But I want to transition to this question since you've been on Instagram, and I think you and Roland were talking about this is about Instagram. I wouldn't say dying, but you know algorithm is killing everyone's exposure now and i'm sure you have a good look on it because of your mm-hmm. your, your insights are pretty are pretty in depth and and you know expensive. i've I've, def- I've definitely noticed a decrease in engagement in general do you know why where i i hate saying this but they keep updating the algorithm every other two weeks every other three weeks right and you can't even really put a hand into exactly what you need to do to actually increase your numbers yeah so the way I look at it right now is just, I, don't, I try not to even look at numbers anymore. Just post my best content out there. Do you have a schedule? No. I used I used to have that, but then I decided it's just quality over quantity kind of thing. Like when I first started my account, I was posting once a day, every single day for a solid 90 days, I think. And then I'm like, okay, now this is a bit too tiring. Let's do one every other day. And then I did that for a long period of time. And then I decided to do, okay, one every two days but then i'm like okay i'm posting photos that i'm not really proud of but i'm just posting them because i have to post that day so now i just i post whenever i've got a good shot i agree with you and when i first met you i talked about my thoughts on quantity over quality but i transitioned i've definitely transitioned over to i wouldn't say you know for me it's kind of a balance in the middle like obviously don't throw shit at the wall and if you're not proud of it don't throw it down but as I remember you told me you used to post three times a day. That was crazy. I don't know how you do that, to be Dude, honest. I had the good thing about that, though, is like I had so many photos for my trip, and like they were all they weren't all like amazing, but like they were postable. And yeah, it really took out like part of my stack, which is I think is good because I would have never gotten through it. Um, but do you have any plans on switching to a, a new platform of any sorts because of Instagram slowdown or? You don't really honestly no. I, I've I've tried to spread myself out, going on Facebook, going on Twitter, and just having being on three platforms. I try to I sell prints, so lately I just pursued Reddit as well. Reddit. <laughs> yeah, like I never used Reddit before, and I yeah I went on the subreddit auto and I decided to post two of my favorite auto photos, and they both hit one k on there so. Like, I, it, it really, really is. Obviously, there, there are way more trolls on there. So no matter what you do, you'll always get hate. I posted a photo, like, I think it's one of my best liked photos on Instagram. I posted there and some guy's like, this is fake. I'm like, sorry? He's like, yeah, there's no way the sun is shining like that. And then there's the shadow at the back. I'm like, do you want me to send you the raw or like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Yeah, but at that point, like, you know it's so fake. Hey, this is fake. Like, they're actually straight up thinking. Like, like, straight up, honestly, like, one, 
I have I, I literally have zero posts on Reddit, so you can't even hear about things that like other than photography. And literally, it's just one photo. I don't even. I think my caption was like when the stars align or something like that. And it's like the guy's full on hating. I'm like, you know what? Do you, man? I'm like, I'll send you the raw if you want, but you'll just dis- you'll be disappointed. He never replied. <laughs> Bro, but no, that's actually, that's funny. Do you find, do you find it harder when you're spreading out to TikTok or not, sorry, to Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that? Do you think, do you think it's a little harder to? Not really, not really. It just, it opens up the market. You can like nowadays you can easily post on on Instagram and let it immediately post for you on Twitter as well as Facebook. I personally don't, I personally don't like doing that just because I feel like I want to personalize each one separately. Doesn't it throw a link too on Facebook? It it does, which well, on Twitter, it posts the link, while on Facebook, it actually posts the photo for you. Okay. But at the same time, I put my hashtags in my caption, so that will immediately put my hashtags on the Facebook as well. Yeah. And I don't want that. Yeah, you don't want all no. those hashtags on Facebook. N- no. So, which is why I just, I do each one separately. Sometimes I'll change the caption ever so slightly, especially with uh, Twitter having 280 characters. Sometimes I go over that, so I need to do each one by itself. Well, it could be easier too, just because you switch to that whole qual- quantity thing, so it's not you're not posting as often too, so it's easier. That's the idea. I don't even need to post them all at the same time. I can post like Instagram and Facebook today, and then tomorrow, tomorrow night, I can just post Twitter. Have you had? It's complete. Have you had decent success with Facebook and Twitter so far, or Reddit was your best? Uh, Facebook actually was my best, surprisingly. Yeah. I I started off. I just invited all my friends and a. And then I posted like two photos and then I posted them into like Ottawa groups and they did decently well. And then I posted the photo. I don't know if you know my, uh, probably my most famous photo. It's just the sun shining right through Peace Tower. Uh, I'm sure I know it. I just can't visualize probably. it in my head. It's like, I think I had only like 200 likes on my page on Facebook and I posted that photo and it had like 1.2K shares. There you go. So like it just blew up all of a sudden. Yeah, I've never had success on Twitter. I've I've had success on Facebook with some of my videos going like again like five k likes like through groups and things like that. But on Twitter, mm-hmm. I find Twitter has the least success. Have you ever had any? Twitter's Twitter's definitely harder. I think my best photo on there is like one hundred and fifty likes on Twitter, but that doesn't compare at all to like my Instagram. Yeah. And then doesn't compare it to Facebook when it actually goes viral. Overall, I get more likes on Twitter than Facebook. It's just on Facebook, I have a bigger chance, honestly, of going viral. Okay. So. Hmm. That, I've honestly, I've, I've, I don't, I don't know. Right now, TikTok is my thing. <laughs> I I've noticed you've popped up on my for you page. <laughs> Bro, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you about something that I'm I've been doing for photographers. I think it's cool, and I'm editing a bunch of videos now. It's like kind of like a quick clip on your phone of behind the scenes of the scene you're at and then yeah. like i don't know how much video editing you do you don't have to do that much but then you can kind of just do like a use like a simple in the in app effect and just transition into the photo and if if you've seen them i'm sure you've seen those type yeah. of videos they seem they pre- they're pretty easy to do and they do pretty well if you know i don't know if it's the photo that has to be good or just like the you know the- it's probably it's probably it's it's everything. It has to be like a decent looking behind the scenes, a good photo. You need to have a good sound on it. Actually, and there's luck too. <laughs> oh, 100%. Literally 100%. Like you have to, you can choose a song that if it's not, it doesn't go viral. It's because it could literally be because of the song you chose. So it's just small things like that. But TikTok is definitely num- like what, probably the best social media right now to be on if you want to have a chance of going viral. Exactly. And I've been telling people like, Literally post your thing. If it doesn't go viral, just repost it. Because sometimes, you know, after reposting it five times, it'll it'll go viral. It'll People will never it. know. The cool That's thing about TikTok yeah. is like none of it is is in chronological order. Even if you look at your following page, none of it's in chronological order. It's funny. It's just all over the place. Yeah. So you can post like ten videos a day. People won't even get mad because they won't even it won't even blow up their feed at all. That, I think it's only if the people follow you and then the following is chronological. But I could be wrong. No, I checked in the following oh. the people that are following you. It's random videos. It's kind of like Instagram, you know, like interesting. It just puts what you think you want to see. But Mm -hmm. um, we're going to move on. Uh, So let's say you get home from a shoot. What is, I'd like to know your process for for post-production. How do you go through your photos? I think you talked to me about it a bit. Yeah. So first thing I do, I just put in my memory card into my computer and move, move, move (laughs) and move all my photos from my memory card to my hard drive. Okay. That is the first thing I'll do. And then I'll just. D is on the computer. 
A desktop? Sorry? Oh, no. It's a laptop? No, it's a MacBook Pro. Okay. And then I just put everything into a external hard drive. Yep. And then, depends if I'm tired or not, I'll either edit that night or I'll get back to it the morning, the next morning. Okay. And then I do most of my edits, I want to say 90% of my edits, if not 95% of my edits on Adobe Lightroom. And then if I ever need to retouch a photo, I'll go on to Photoshop. Yeah. Do you ever, how many, how many photos of the photo shoot do you think you actually use? For some, for people who are watching, to know how much photos of a photo shoot, like what, like 5%, 10%, 20%, how much end up going onto your, your Instagram or for prints or things like that? Minimal. I think because I decide, I choose quality over quantity now. For sure. <laughs> that I'll, I'll maximum, like I'll take easily 300, 400 photos in like an hour and a bit shoot kind of thing. And I'll maximum will be like 10 photos, maximum. How do you choose the photos? You just kind of go through them and you just kind of get a photo like, for them? I already know. Okay. Exactly. I'm not, like I'll know exactly what type of shot I was looking for because like when I take the photo, I'm like, okay, I know I like this shot. So I'll, I'll go through it later and I'm like, okay, I've taken like three or four variations of it. I'll bring them all up and I'll be like, okay, which one do I prefer now on like my big computer? like a bigger screen so I can tell exactly which one I prefer. Maybe one is slightly out of focus yeah, or something like that. And then I'll just choose it, edit it. If I'm happy with it, beauty, and then move on. Do you have a plan when you go out to shoot then kind of thing? No. Like, do you know what you're going for? Like I just, I, I just, I know the location I want to go to. Yeah. In Ottawa now, it's just let me switch it up kind of thing. Yeah. Like, how can I make this photo so unique or how can I make this location very unique? Yeah, you must be running out of places to shoot, man. <laughs> Honestly, that's why I haven't shot in a while in Ottawa. I need to get back out there. <laughs> so, so. I'm, which is why I'm contemplating going into like street photography. Yeah, okay. I feel like I'd really enjoy that. Have you ever shot at the same place twice? In Ottawa? Yeah, like there's places yeah. that you like a lot that you just go back to shoot just to shoot. 100%. Just anywhere, anywhere downtown. Yeah. Whether it's like for example, one of my best locations is Nipping Point. Okay. You can either shoot, you, you can either shoot into uh, Gatineau. You can shoot Par Peace Tower, Parliament. Yeah. You can shoot the bridge. There's so many places you can shoot from there. You can shoot the Supreme Court. If it's not in the winter, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually there. I think three weeks ago when it was like full on snowing and it's just, it just so beautiful up there i have a side question for you have you ever had issues with your external hard drives no thank god <laughs> at the moment i've got two and i haven't had any issues now have you filled one up mm, barely like there's like 100 gigs left out of like two tera so well that's the thing like i feel like photo is a lot like you can take a lot more photos oh 100 percent Cause I have no 100%. space left on any of my hard drives, man. <laughs> Jeez, that, that's the thing with video. Like usually what's the size of your video? Like capacity wise? Man, the thing on is like, now I can shoot like 4K raw, or sorry, not raw, 4K like log footage, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, pretty high def footage. I don't know, I can't tell you exactly cause it displays it in like megabytes or something. So it's like two yeah. million or something like that for like a, Jeez. It's, it's, they're big man. And that's the thing, that's the thing I would like about photos. You can get so much more in, but it is, for me, it's a lot hard. I like video more cause it's like, there's a lot more you can do with it. it it's, it's, it's easier to tell a story with a video. Exactly, exactly. How do you go about? How do you go about that? Like with with telling a story for 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 through a photo, or do you just kind of go for, for the look? You like the look. It depends. Not every single photo has a story. Yeah, I agree. When whenever there is someone in my photo, I try to create a story with it. Okay. Whether it be one of my photos that I think is one one of my last six photos or one of the last nine photos on Instagram, I like this old man in Istanbul, Turkey, just sitting in his car. Like he was sitting in his car, I asked him if he can just look out the window for me and like using Google Translate <laughs> like, straight up. Cause like, I don't speak Turkish. He doesn't speak English or nor Arabic. No, so, I'm like, so I asked him, I'm like, I just pointed at my camera. I looked at him. He didn't understand what I was saying. So I just pulled out my phone, wrote on Google Translate. And then he smiled at me. I'm like, sweet. So I t like, I take the photos there. So it's just small things like that. You just try to create the feel sometimes before I ask a person. 
I already know exactly what I'm looking for in that shot in that location. So. I, th- oh. I think that's really important. Even just before you go out, kind of know what you're you're looking for because like or have an idea. I won't say no. I I have friends who go out and and have no idea whether it's video shooters and some people like to go that way. But I think yeah. it's nice to have an idea just so that like you're not like wasting like you know. A hundred percent. If I'm ever traveling to a new location or something like. I'll go on Google, I'll go on Pinterest, I'll go on Instagram, and I'll search that location up. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just get ideas. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that place exists. And I'll just, I'll go towards that, and then I'll try to put on my own spin. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. So, um, what, uh, what's it, what would you say your relationship is with perfectionism? <laughs> very, very, very high, I want to say. Like you want to kill it <laughs> straight up. Like if I notice a tiny thing in my photo, yeah, and like to me, it's that's it. I'm like every time I look at the photo, no matter how good the photo is, that's all I see. But like that's the thing. Like how do you how how would you say you get over that? Do you ever get over that? Like when you're taking photos, do you go into Photoshop and just fix it. <laughs> oh, 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 that's gonna be why I use Photoshop. Photoshop yeah. <laughs> honestly, like, like I can't I can't get, I can't I can't get myself, myself to actually post, post the photo. photo. Yeah. Because if I, I post the photo every time I go on my Instagram, Instagram that's all I'll see. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll end, end up taking it down. down. So, so by following this method, is the reason I've never, never like, I've only ever removed one photo off of my Instagram. Oh, really? So it's just, all your photos, you see them as perfect when, when you go on your Instagram. There's, yeah. there's never one that you've seen with, like, an issue? Oh, there is now when I look back as I improve my photography. Like, I'll, I'll go through a photo. I'm like, why the hell is this whole photo blue? Like, completely blue. The building is blue. But I'm like, you know what? Which is the reason I don't want to delete anything. I'm like, I can always go back and see how much I've improved. Like straight up, some of my photos from Cuba are full on blue. Like I'll send, I'll send you the photo later. But I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm keeping it on there, just to show people that you can actually improve. Dude, I'm, li- I'm not even kidding. Today, what I did, I was looking like at my first ever photos I took, like 2017, something like this, when I first started taking photos. And I would just, I would just be laughing because I was like, "No way! I thought this was a good composition." That's it. <laughs> like sometimes it's not even like the composition is decent, like any other tourist composition kind of thing. <laughs> but then, like straight up, it's a because comp- I used to try to have matching feed. Yeah. So I so I do whatever I can to get the photos to be matching, even though it's like some of them are just comp- like they just don't match. Yeah. <laughs> It's like make the building blue just because the rest of the photos are blue, and I'm like, you know what? It is what it is now. That's the thing, man. Do you so you can never get over that? Because I remember I used to have an issue with that. Now my feed doesn't match for anything, and I don't think yours does either. Does yours barely? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'll tr- I'll try to have a similar tone throughout. Yeah. But overall, I'm like, no, just post the photo. It's such a hassle. <laughs> yeah, es- especially now that I like I don't post that often. I post once a week kind of thing. Yeah. If I post a photo I'm not happy with, I'll see it on my feed for a long period of time before it disappears all the way down. So that's why. I'd rather just have a like banging individual photos than like a sick feed. I you that know what I used it, to yeah. do, bro? I used to have a black like in the middle. I used to have quotes like black bar of quotes. <laughs> you know, I've seen that feed. I, I've, I've tr- like I've tried everything with the feed. At the beginning, I was just posting, and then I decided to do like blocks of nine, all the similar tones, similar color. And then I decided, okay, let me do like three dark, three bright, three dark, three bright. And then I'm like, okay, what if I do like one black, one white, like one dark, one white, bright kind of thing? Yeah. So I've, I've tried everything on Instagram. And then I finally decided like the, the only thing like I generally enjoy is just posting my photos. I don't care if my feed doesn't look beautiful. That's not what I'm going for. I'm not a blogger. I'm not a fashion blogger in that sense, so I don't need. I would just recommend form. everyone, man, just don't care too much about how the feed looks as a whole, because in the end, it's all about the individual photos themselves, not the. And people like rip their hairs out over this stuff, and I used to do it myself. And I say, even if you're a blogger, I don't know if bloggers do it, but fashion bloggers always do that. Fashion bloggers might do it, yeah. but like, like just get over it, get over yourself, and 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 just post because that's... <laughs> as, like I understand why fashion bloggers do it. They have to like create a sense to their page as to why people would come back or like something they're known for. Yeah. Like you with your photography, you're known for your editing style. Yeah. 
So either you, you, ha- you like crushed blacks, you either like high clarity, even though I don't recommend it, but like it's just each person has his own. Do more, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, that wasn't even a big idea. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's just i'm talking in general everyone used to do it oh everyone used to do it i, I used to do it i used to do high saturation high clarity and people but used like, to do dehaze too <laughs> like to be honest i barely use dehaze but saturation clarity pump pump that up <laughs> <laughs> honestly yeah man <laughs> so like i guess it's just each person creates his own instagram in his own liking yeah but it's just for me they get over it because I, I think like once you've experienced it all like me and you where we've tried you know the blocks we've tried the, all the stuff you realize yeah. it's just not your, worth your time as a photographer it's not even it's not even about not worth my time I genuinely don't enjoy that yeah. part oh yeah like I generally enjoy editing each photo by itself trying to make it the best photo ever kind of thing at each photo like I don't care oh it doesn't match my other photo so I can't post it anymore I'm like no this doesn't work like, the only way now I look at my feed and I'm like, okay, I posted two Peace Tower photos within my last three photos. I'm going to lay off of anything that has Parliament for, like, just a couple of photos before posting it again. Yeah. Just so it's not repetitive. Yeah. But that's the only part I look at. Well, well, then also you're editing your photos for, you know, the last photo you took. You're not editing the photo for the photo. You know what I mean? That's literally it, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on here. Um. What are your thoughts on Ottawa? Because I know you take a lot of photos of Ottawa. So what are your thoughts as an aesthetic, uh, aesthetic city? I can't speak. I actually, I really like it. You like it? I really like it. Like, there's so much to actually photograph. After a while, obviously. Yeah, after a while, if, if, for if, sure. If, if you lived in any city after a while, you've captured almost everything you can possibly can. Yeah. What would you say so our that? best feature is? What, what's our favorite, what's your favorite, you know, monument? <laughs> <The> parliament? <laughs> Uh, favorite monument is definitely Parliament, just because it, that's what we're known for. But, like the best part about Ottawa is the photography community is so small that everyone knows everyone knows everyone. Yeah. So like, if you think about like for example Toronto, yeah, there are so many rooftopers, there are so many just regular photographers, there's so many tourists. Yeah. Like you can't even distinguish one from the other kind of thing. Yeah. While here it's like oh that's Dax and I just saw him shooting in front of parliament yeah yeah we follow each other on instagram like the community is so small that everyone knows everyone that's a really good point man i've never thought of that because i one day i was looking i was like okay i'm gonna just try to find the auto community because this was before i would even communicate with anyone in the community. Yeah. yeah i would just kind of post photos to post photos and and it is not it's not that big like i feel like i know mainly most people there are those people who you know post three photos say they're a photographer and then never and fall off the face of the earth but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah no 100 percent i i i I would agree with you. How do you? How would you compare it to like cities like Montreal and, and Toronto? Montreal, personally, I'm not a big fan of Montreal. Oh really? Like, like I don't know. It's probably because I always go there during winter, so it's always cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> like t- Toronto, for example, I absolutely love. I love capturing photos. There's so many unique way. Well, unique to me because I don't live in Toronto. So, like, there's many unique ways of capturing the CN Tower, for example. Or like the Toronto skyline, something that we don't really have in Ottawa. Yeah, well, I find though, like you can really compare to. Could you compare Toronto to Ottawa? It's bigger, of course, but like the CN Tower is kind of like the Parliament, right? It's kind of like a, the main monument. Yes and no. Okay. The CN Tower can be seen from everywhere, which is some, which is something Toronto, like Toronto people have. They can capture it from basically any apartment downtown. A lot of perspectives any, you can get on the CN Tower. That's the lead. You can either go for wide angle and you can get like the Rogers Center with it. You can get just the top part. You can get it right in between two buildings. There's so much you can do with it. Yeah. While here you're forced, you're either, you're in Gatineau, you're in Nippin Point, or you're on Parliament Hill itself if you want to capture a piece. Other than that, you can't actually really see the Parliament so. But I think Parliament's a lot more of an interesting building to look at. Like CN Tower's cool for sure, but Parliament has like those two side pieces too, right? The East Block, West Block. Yeah, that is true. Probably right now it's full. Of, like right, like right. No, I don't mind it. Like I actually like it. Just right now everything's construction. That is true. They are under construction right now. But I think the Parliament has a lot. It's a lot more of a like you know, it's got a, it's got some cool texture on it and things. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. Like, the whole city, if you want to compare it to Toronto, we are an older city, look-wise. Yeah. 
Montreal obviously beats us to that. But like Toronto wise, it's just like com- everything is upgraded. Everything seems newer. Well, we're like the underdog, I would say, of the three. But at the same time, like I was talking to someone's like uh, everything that happens there is gonna come to us. Just like you know, two years later. <laughs> like that, like the LRT. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we got the shitty version, bro. Honestly, but I haven't had any issues it with is. it. I don't know what people are saying. I haven't had any issues with it. Have you? I've had del- I've had delays with it. Just because like, I go to the University of Ottawa, so I'm always on the LRT kind of thing. So like I've had delays. So like, like three like, times. So like yeah. I, I haven't really experienced yeah. the full thing, but yeah, it, it's definitely improved lately. Is it perfect? No way, but it's definitely it, it's definitely it's definitely improved since. I like it. I think it was started. about time. I've honestly, after my trip to Europe, I was like, you know, why don't we have a train in the city? Trains are like the best thing you could get. And when it works, it works good. No. Yeah, no, no complaints. Yeah, and it's fast. I think it's pretty fast. Like before, it was kind of hard to get across the city really quickly, like from one side to the other. You know. That's the benefit of the train. You don't get stuck in traffic. Exactly. Like you know, you'll be stopping at every single stop for twenty seconds or fifteen seconds, and that's it. And then you're moving. So yeah, no complaints. It's about time. I'm asking you one more question, then we're probably gonna wrap it up because I think it's been forty five minutes. I don't know these. We've like had to recall like three times, so I'm kind of adding up the time. But, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the photo industry nowadays? I think it's growing myself. Do you think it's shrinking? And uh, it's, how, how would how would you say take advantage of it for for, for the listeners? Definitely, like the photography community is just growing. Yeah. Saturated, definitely. But there's all like. You're always needed, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Just because there's so many photographers doesn't mean that you shouldn't be become a photographer. Yeah. You may have something that no one else has. Yeah. It's so like I'd recommend anyone that actually wants to pick up a camera and go out and take photos, do it. Yeah. You won't regret it. Yeah. At least this way, you actually have tried something that you wanted. Yeah. And my best thing is just post your photos everywhere. Yeah. Like. Don't be like, oh, no, I'm only posting on Instagram. Just go out there. Find any social media you want, whether it be TikTok, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, whatever it is. Just post your photos everywhere so people can see and appreciate your work. Would you say specify in a niche? Because I know you're mainly in landscape, right? Correct. Landscape slash travel. Yeah. Yeah. Would you tell people who, before, were you taking photos of like everything when you started just to get a, a feel for it? <sighs> like I had city part of the thing so like just street photos and I still enjoy doing that I don't post it as much but like I've never been into like like I've tried portraits I haven't like I don't enjoy the editing part of the portraits really what don't you like like softening the skin because they're always I, <laughs> they're sk- I, I, I honestly I don't know how to retouch that's literally it for like portraits I find it very difficult and very easy to mess up Portraits so, are good, though. They really convey emotion and story. It's very easy to tell that, a story. That, that's it, which is why whenever I do a portrait on my Instagram account, there's always something else in the photo. Yeah. I'm just using that person as the part of the story for the photo itself. You're using so. that person. You're a mean guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way of putting it. <laughs> okay, bro. Three questions I ask every single guest. Number one is your go-to camera setup what are you using right now let the people know nikon d750 hold <laughs> nikon d750 yo and what then made you cho- no. wait real quick what made you choose nikon like you had the options <laughs> i i looked you like, like yellow I, I, was, I, <laughs> I was actually only interested in photo i still am only interested in photo i i do want to try video yeah but right now i'm just still just with photo and one like i had no issues with nikon they had a good deal on nikon d500 and it was one of the best cameras entry level doesn't nikon have like better photo cameras i think i, I yeah i don't know their 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 vi- their videos absolute trash i'll straight up tell you that their autofocus is horrendous maybe now they've they've, they've probably improved it in like the mirrorless z7 z6 like overall i do like the nikon yeah i used i used to be a fan of brandon wolfo Awful. I think that's how you say it. I haven't. I haven't like seen his stuff. Yeah, he still. He still. No, he still does exact same what he's been doing. And he was a Nikon guy. So I just decided to go for Nikon. I'm like, there's no right or wrong. Oh, there's none. There's none. There's so I just decided to go for Nikon, and then I just enjoyed the software. I enjoyed the camera itself. 
I enjoyed everything about Nikon. Like I had no complaints. So that's why when I upgraded, I decided to go for a D750. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any issues with any any of the brands. Really, right now, the only thing I would say, like, as far as video goes, Sony is, like, you know, blowing it out of the water. I don't know if you've seen their cameras. So, Sony's unreal, but they also have an unreal price to it. Exactly. That's why not everyone is going for a Sony just because of the price. It's just that, like, the their technology is way ahead of the game, and other companies got to catch up. And the thing is, if Sony's technology is that far ahead, their stuff's going to get cheaper while everyone's, you know, is, reaches up with that technology, but they can't afford to make it cheaper while yeah. Sony already had it. But um, what is your dream camera setup? Do you have your dream camera setup right now? What, what's the camera? Is there a camera you're looking at? Well, right now I have the D750 and then the Holy, Holy Trinity of lenses. So like the 14 to 24 2.8 lens. And then the 20, 24-70 2.8 and then 70 2.8. Do you bring them all the time everywhere you go? Or do you kind yeah. of just depends? Uh, well, most shoots I have all three with me. Yeah, okay. Like they fit perfect. They like they fit perfectly in the bag, so like no complaints whatsoever. Probably the the only thing I'd upgrade my camera with is get the VR three, uh, for this. Uh, so basically, the third version of the seventy to two hundred. Okay. I have the VR one, so the first one that came out. Yeah. And then get the VR version of the twenty four seventy, but that's like three K, and I'm like, you know what, <laughs> the regular version is doing pretty fine right now. So I don't need. You seem like your setup. You're you're pretty good, and at the end of the day, it's just an extension of yourself. So Th- that's the idea. Like y- you can easily have an entry entry level camera, and you can get as good photos as if you have like a D eight fifty or a Canon one D Mark two. Yeah. Like you'll still get amazing photos. Sure, s- sure. Like those high end cameras will do probably better in like low light or something like that, but like day to day if you're out there shooting sun uh, sunset shooting just through the day honestly just even your iphone camera you can get amazing photos of god that. i'm making a video about it right now like dude iphones are like crazy nowadays like it, they're absolutely unreal shoot raw people don't even know this but you can actually shoot no, raw on your phone through the lightroom yeah and you can edit through lightroom and like mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. it's free so it's like literally yeah. like you have like a DSLR in your pocket, On like your, I would say. Like most people don't know about that now. No, people don't know about that. You get Lightroom Mobile for free and you can control the settings too. I'm sure you... That's the... Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Okay, do you want to plug yourself? Let us know the future of you, what your plans are for the future. Um, and then also if you want to... I don't know if you put, you gave me one, but your mantra. I like to end it with the mantra that you... Your mantra. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll end with that one. Yeah. And so... I forgot, what was the question? Um, First sorry, part of just it? tell me the future of you, what, what your plans are for the, the upcoming... I just want to... I just want to grow my Instagram. Well, not just Instagram, but grow my following all over. So Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yeah, respect. Are you going to start posting on TikTok? <laughs> See, I may post on TikTok, but I don't like putting my face on camera as much. Yeah, you don't have to. Like, it's just kind of like yeah. flip the camera. Like I, I, can, I, can, I can do like the behind the scenes. I can do those ideas kind of thing. Yeah. But I can't see myself just straight up vlogging or talking to a camera. Not everyone has to do it. Like, yeah, like, like, like even with podcasts, I find it weird just because I know a camera's filming me as I speak. Well, like right now you don't really. It just kind of looks like you're... <laughs> just chatting. <laughs> but I see that red light. It's telling me that it's filming. So... <laughs> My, my cam oh on oh. my on my thing oh, okay so it's just showing that my camera is working i'm like yep <laughs> okay well where was the question okay so you're just gonna start posting i guess then or yeah co- keep posting just, keep, just start posting keep, <laughs> no keep keep posting and engage as much as i can yeah for sure i re- create as many following you so uh create as many connections as possible exactly that's literally the number one thing network and make connections so where can the people follow you sandeek Sorry? Where can the people follow you? Oh, they can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all under the app Boundcast. Boundcast. And if you're, re- if you're listening to this before January 23rd, you can vote for me on the Faces Awards, the awards the awards hosted by Faces Magazine. Check them out. They'll, it'll be in my Instagram bio. So. I'll, put, I'll put the link in the show notes as well, just, for, Be- just to get some votes. So. Appreciate okay, it. Do you want to let people know your mantra and then we're going we're gonna to sign off? <laughs> You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Let's go Wayne Win- Gretzky, right? S- s- yep, said by Wayne Gretzky. And you can literally apply that to anything in life, whether it be photography or just day-to-day life. Just do everything you want to do, because if you don't, you'll end up regretting it and be like, what if? Just do it. If it didn't work out, it's okay. You can just move on.
but just take the shot basically thank you for listening to share talk i hope you guys enjoyed this episode we'll see you in the next one